In the next few videos, we're going to go over circuits. This video is going to talk about current, voltage, and resistance. So first of all, current, which is denoted by capital I, can be defined as the net flow of electrical charge. Often when we're looking at current, we're looking at metal wires. Metals have what is called the electron C model, where there is a sea of valence electrons that are moving freely around a lattice of positively charged cations. So the cations are fixed in place, they cannot move, and the electrons are moving freely about. Now, in all pieces of metal, electrons are moving in random directions. So some are moving to the right, some are moving to the left, some are moving up, some are moving down. And normally there is no net movement of electrical charge. And if there's no net movement of charge, there is no current. So in order for there to be current, that means that there has to be net movement of electrons. So in this case, let's say that we have net movement of electrons to the right, which means electrons are moving in all directions, but there are more electrons moving to the right than any other direction. So now that there is net movement of electrons, we have current. But an important thing to understand about current and its direction is that the conventional direction for current is based on positive charges. So even though in this case it's the electrons that are moving and electrons are moving to the right, we define current or the direction of current is to the left. And this is independent of whether negative charges or positive charges are moving. So what's good to keep in mind is that if electrons are moving, then current is in the opposite direction of electron flow. Whereas if positive charges are moving, such as during an action potential when a neuron, then current is in the same direction as the movement of positive charges. Okay, so next, current is also a quantity that we can calculate using this equation, which is essentially the amount of charge that has flowed per unit time. Now using this equation, we can figure out the units for current, which is charge over time, which would be a coulomb per second. A coulomb per second is what we call an ampere in SI units, which we also often just call an amp and denote with capital A. Now, one last thing to talk about current is that this is the net flow of electrons in a particular direction. And normally, electrons don't have any desire to have net movement in a certain direction. The way we can get this to happen is if we have a potential difference. If you recall in our videos on electrostatics, we said that electrons move spontaneously towards higher potential. So this net movement of electrons in this direction will actually only occur if there is high potential on the right side of this metal wire and low potential on the left side of this metal wire. Okay, so where do we get a potential from? Well, this is where voltage comes in. And voltage is often used synonymously with electromotive force and they're technically not the same thing, but for the MCAT, you can treat voltage and electromotive force as being essentially synonymous. So voltage, as you again recall from our videos on electrostatics, is simply a potential difference. Right? Voltage we often denote with a capital V, and V is just delta phi, a potential difference. And in a circuit, a potential difference is supplied by a battery. And batteries can have various sources. One source you'll recall from our electrochemistry videos from galvanic or voltaic cells, those can supply a voltage. And since a battery is an actual circuit component that we can connect with other circuit components, we need to know what the circuit diagram for a battery looks like, which generally looks like this. You have two parallel plates. One plate is longer, one plate is shorter. And the longer plate is always the positive plate, and their smaller plate is always the negative plate. So the positive plate then is higher potential, so that means electrons are always moving towards the positive plate, and they're moving away from the negative plate, which is low potential. Okay, now voltage or electromotive force has units of volts, so volts we recall is the same as a joule per coulomb. 
And here there's terminal voltage. We're going to talk about this in a bit. We're actually going to look at resistance before we come back here. Okay, so resistance is denoted by capital R. And resistance is a measure of current repulsion. And in a circuit, resistance is supplied by resistors. And resistors is another circuit element that we can connect in our circuit. The circuit diagram is essentially a squiggly line that looks like this. And you can connect all sorts of resistors to your circuit. So different resistors will have different resistances. And the MCAT may actually ask you some questions about how to calculate the resistance of particular resistors, which you can do with this equation, which is resistance is equal to rho L over A. So the first term here is rho. Rho is not the density. Rho here stands for resistivity. Resistivity is an intrinsic property of a material. It's essentially how much does a material intrinsically oppose charge flow. So for instance, conductors such as metals will generally have low resistivity, whereas non-metals that are insulators have high resistivity. So this depends on the material you're using to make your resistor. L is the length of the resistor. So the longer the resistor, the longer the path your electrons have to fight to get through. So that will increase the resistance. A is the cross-sectional area of the resistor. And here, if you increase the area of the resistor, you actually decrease the resistance. And that's because consider the situation where you have an infinitely uh, thin resistor. So the area is super tiny. Then the electrons basically have to go single file through the resistor. But if you increase the cross-sectional area, now you open up more paths for the electrons to flow through the resistor. So increasing the area will actually lower the resistance of the resistor. All right. And resistance, you do need to you know the units. The units for resistance is ohms. And ohms is denoted by the letter omega. All right. So now that we've discussed current, voltage, and resistance, now we can talk about Ohm's law. Ohm's law is the idea that if you have current passing through a resistor, the, the, the current is going to be directly proportional to the voltage. The greater the voltage, the greater the current. And it's going to be inversely proportional to the resistance. The greater the resistance, the less the current. And we often just rearrange the equation in this format. So voltage is equal to current times the resistance, which another interpretation of this is if current passes through a resistor, you're going to get a voltage drop across that resistor. Okay, so now having talked about Ohm's law, we can come back to terminal voltage. Terminal voltage is the output voltage that you get from a battery. And it actually isn't just the voltage of the battery. And that's because batteries also have some internal resistance. So since they have some internal resistance, when current passes through the battery, you're gonna get some voltage drop across the battery that doesn't actually get, uh, that actually takes away from the voltage of the battery. So there's an equation for this, the terminal voltage is equal to the voltage of the battery, which is sometimes also written as EMF, minus IR. So within this equation, I just want to make a note here that the voltage of the battery is sometimes also called the EMF. The terminal voltage, this is the actual output voltage that's delivered to the circuit. I is the current through the battery. And R is the internal resistance of the battery. So essentially, if you have a 1.5 volt battery, it doesn't mean that the output voltage is actually 1.5 volts. If the battery has some internal resistance that's not negligible, then there's going to be a small voltage drop before that 1.5 volts gets delivered to your circuit. So your circuit will get less than 1.5 volts. Okay, so that is current, 
voltage and resistance, which we can put together in the form of Ohm's law.